Well, there we go, everyone. We've got a couple of seconds to start, and uh, I see I see Phil's joined us again. I swear I'm going to have a T-shirt printed, Phil, that says, uh, if I only have one fan in the world and it's Phil, then I have enough fans. Okay, so I'm quite uh, convinced of that. So welcome back, everyone. Um, Phil's also there. He's such a rock star. He's uh, really been helping a lot with, uh, with questions on the previous webinars, and uh, I'm always very flattered when um, my peers join my webinars. I don't quite know, but good for you, Phil, for being there. Then um, I don't have my video on at the moment, um, so if you were wondering why, I do want some more real estate when uh, I go into the Teams demo. So I might go on video a bit later, but I'm also tired, so maybe I don't want to go on video today. But thanks for everyone uh, joining, and thanks for being here, and I hope that this is going to be a session that's going to teach you some awesome things. We have the uh, Q&A open, and um, I've got Phil there, who's awesome at answering questions, and um, Dina has also joined today. So Dina is my sister, and um, it's legal to abuse family to make them do things for you in tech. That's just how it works. So Dina has also joined us today. Um, she's also got some cool things to share towards the end of the webinar. And um, I have to just warn everyone is that I have an unbelievable amount of content to cover. So. So this is going to be crazy, okay? I, I do suggest that you go watch the recording afterwards. I definitely will load it again and uh, maybe slow it down because there's no way you can teach someone to uh, efficiently use Teams in just one hour. It's just not possible. But I am going to try and cover as much as I can and then between myself and Dina and even Phil, so that's me putting you on the spot, Phil, we are going to share a lot of resources in the q and if you as well. So grab those URLs as we share them. So little things that we think can help you um, get going as well, because this really is just an overview. So thank you very, very much for everyone joining. Um, it's um, it's definitely like one of my favorite things to do, even though right now it's 7 p.m. I'm a little bit tired. It's been a rough day, but uh, but there's nothing that makes me happier than helping community. And uh, I know that I've shared this lot. So Ubuntu is an African Bantu word, and it means that I am who I am because of who we all are. And don't ever forget that, that community is the only reason why we do this. And everyone's got a voice to share, and everyone's got uh, tips and tricks to share. So don't stand back. We can all learn from each other. I do hope that you're going to enjoy it. Um, I am going to go into demo immediately. Um, I'm going to just give a second or two once I start sharing my screen to make sure that it is sharing my desktop and not just the um, PowerPoint. So let's just uh, grab that website and make sure that it's going to open up. I just want to get my teams going. So uh, there we go. That worked. <laughs> Look at us winning at technology today. <laughs> anyway, so, um, so first things first, um, I can't go too much um, into the whole building of Teams. I did do a previous webinar on that. I'll share the URL again as well with the recording. Um, but today is all about just using the basic features of um, Microsoft Teams and making sure that you understand all um, the important things that I think that you need to know. But like I said, there's no way I can cover everything, and especially because I talk so much about other stuff like I'm doing now. But um, I'm going to try and share most of those with you. I just want to also grab my um, OneNote somewhere that I've got lots of notes in, so I'll hold in a moment. So first things first, I'm going to go through a couple of basics. The first thing that I want you to know is that Microsoft Teams is available in the web, which is exactly where I am right now presenting, because I've got the Teams live event in the desktop app on my other screen, so I couldn't show you my desktop app. So it's in the web, it's in the desktop app available as well, and of course it works unbelievably well in um, in the mobile devices. Okay, so really, really works well. I've been caught a couple of times um, on the road, traveling somewhere, and I have a meeting that I have to attend, and I promise you the mobile device just works incredible. So it is available on those different platforms. And then of course, um, as I said, I'm not going to fully go through all the whole new creation of teams and things. Um, at the moment, I was covering that in my previous webinar. But once you have a Microsoft team, um, I think the important things to understand is the UI of teams. And when I throw these like IT slang things around, it's just the user interface. It's that screen that you're looking at um, and it's the menus that you see. So let's quickly run down all the menu buttons that I see there and what their purpose are. And as I said, again, please, this is not my Q&A, this is our Q&A. Anyone jump in, anyone share tips and tricks, anyone ask questions, 
and uh, we can definitely get the most out of this for everyone. So if I look at the top left hand corner, you'll see that there's an activity button. So think of an activity button and believe me, I don't want to press my activity button now because there's a lot of crazy stuff lying there that I don't want to see right now. But the activity button is very similar to your mobile device. When uh, like my phone, I've got a um, Huawei, so it's, a, it's an Android device. If I drag down on my screen, it shows me how many Facebook likes or Instagram messages, or I don't know, Twitter, or whatever I've had. That's my activity and that's what activity also shows you is that shows you any recent things that happened around you as a person. The chat is um, what I would call ad hoc or direct or private chat. OK, so that's not related to a specific team that you belong to. So if you were a member of this team, that chat would be with random people that could be external people in your company, but also random across departments. So that's direct chat and think of that um, similar to and um, what your Skype for Business was for you, OK? So that's pretty much because remember, Skype for Business is uh, rebuilt inside of Teams and better than ever, by the way. So that's your chat. We're going to talk about group chat as well in a moment, so I can share a couple of things there. The Teams little button there then shows you specific teams that you belong to. So think of that kind of like as the place where you then see and let's think of it as folders. Those folders where the content and the conversations and all of those crazy things are happening. Ah, thank you, Phil. There we go. I'll send you uh, <laughs> five stars for Phil. Thanks, everyone. Phil for president, I think, at the moment. So um, if I then look at the teams, that's the groups of specific people that I belong to as a member or as an owner. That's set by permissions and it's set by focus areas or topics, etc. Then the calendar button, and I'm not going to click on all the buttons now because I'm actually just demoing live out of my production tenant. I do have a demo tenant. I've been way too lazy. I just pay for it every month and I've never set up content in there. So that's why this is going down. So the calendar will show me my Outlook calendar. So it brings in any meetings out of my Outlook, but as well as any Teams meetings, OK? And even my live events that's been scheduled. So that's my Outlook um, as well as my Teams calendar. The calls button that you see there, of course, um, very similar to the chat. Again, think of Skype for Business, the calling function you had. So that's where you can actually make calls and you can contact people and you can set up contacts, etc. The files button and again, I'm not going to click through everything because I, I, this is live. I can't go like uh, hide credentials in a video and I just didn't feel like today doing a demo tenant. OK, so that's just uh, how it's going to be. So the call site, that's where you can set up contacts as well, where you can set up to uh, contact someone externally. I have found, I don't know what the perfect answer to that is, but I have found that uh, I can't just search for an email and start a chat to start a call. It's normally just easier for me to set up the contact first. So if it's someone external, say Phil, for example, he's external to my company, the easiest for me between is rather to go to the call side where the contacts are and to then set up Phil as a contact um, and then be able to chat with him and to call with him. OK, so that just works easier for me. And then you can actually add other buttons there, which is quite cool. You'll see my planner shows at the moment, but I can add any of these, which is my personalized app. So if I add OneNote there, it will show me all the OneNotes that I um, use and um, have ownership on or have access to. There's the WhoBot as well, definitely one of my faves, and we are going to cover that as well. Um, there's your Yammer communities, etc. And then in the bottom left, there's apps. So that's productivity apps and things that you can add. So you can go scroll around there. Um, this will absolutely be available on YouTube later. Um, so I normally share it uh, around about tomorrow somewhere. Got a very nasty requirement session tomorrow morning. So this will be going to happen tomorrow afternoon. Thanks, Dina. So um, there's your help button as well. And um, that's also where you can give feedback and to get help and things. Then at the top of your screen, you'll see that there's the command box and in the command box, there's quite a lot of commands that you can use. So if I click on that box and I type a forward slash, it actually gives me a list of all the commands I can use. Thanks, you know, it gives me a list of all the commands that I can use. There's a couple of them that I kind of use frequently. So forward slash mentions will very quickly give me a list of uh, of where I've gotten mentioned in specific conversations, etc. The other one that I use um, as well is <laughs> the forward slash busy. So when um, we were under lockdown, um, I actually had my sister's daughter was staying with me. So I would put my status to busy if I was busy with the uh, recordings or things. So I've got this little busy light and it will make it red in my office area and she would know that she shouldn't uh, talk to me or come up to me 
behind uh, the computer so that it goes on recording. So that's kind of why I would use things like that because normally your camera actually puts your busy status on or off. And then um, I definitely use the what's new and I use the who bot. So that's very, very cool. And um, I also use help. OK, so let me just quickly show you what help looks like. If I go forward slash help, it actually hopes, uh, um, opens up the training material as well as any topics that you can take a look at, um, etc. I'll just run through some of them very quickly. And as I said, I've got like, I don't know, two and a half days of content to cover in a less than an hour. So there's going to be a lot of things. Yes, it will be recorded. You can find it afterwards and work through it. And we are going to also share some resources um, in the channel for you to grab. Um, and if you have any questions, please reach out. So there's some uh, some cool things there. And uh, there's your what's new as well, because remember, we're working with Agile technologies now, which means that Microsoft is uh, pushing out new features and updates on a weekly basis, which is pretty incredible. And if you don't keep your eye on this, then you actually won't know that there's something cool that's new. So there you can see May 27th, uh, there's a new release there. And if you scroll through there, you'll also see other little cool things that they've added. So there's also the nine block now, the three by three grid that's available. So a pretty cool thing is to use the forward slash um, help to try and get help. And I'm going to show you some other resources as well. Um, that's just your basic UI. And I just wanted to, I'm not going to go into demo on the WhoBot. I did do a blog about the WhoBot um, to actually demo it. Because if I go into it now, it's going to show my um, my phone number and I already don't sleep enough at night, so I'm not going to go there. But in the WhoBot, um, there's quite a lot of questions that you can ask the WhoBot. So, I mean, as it builds up history um, based on your information, you can even say, hey, who did I have a meeting with about this? Or who did I ask about that, etc." So let's just quickly check and oh, my word, if it shows my, um, my cell phone number, then it's going to be that, people. Oh, there we go. So if I go to the who bot um, and I, for example, like to say who is my, wait, let's just go back. If I go who, do you see the list of questions there that you can ask? So who knows about this? Who's worked with this? Who did I mail about this? Who did I have a meeting with? But let's just do a crazy test to make me feel better. Who is my manager? It's always my favorite little thing. Let's take a look. I am the supreme ruler <laughs> manager. <laughs> it's always the first thing I show my students. And that is purely because my Active Directory and the line managers aren't populated because it's pretty much me and a sheep in the company. So I never even went that far because he knows I'm his boss and that's it. But you can also look up someone as you can see here and you can then click on their name and get their details and start a chat with them. The who bot's pretty cool, okay? And you can also, when you open the contact card, there's a little um, hierarchy like an org structure icon that you can click. And that then gives you org structure as well if that is populated in your company, which is pretty cool. So that's the who bot. And um, I'm going to go straight into the team side now. So like I said, um, what I'm going to show you in the conversations here works on the chat side as well. So normal um, chat messages, etc. I am going to just create a channel that I'm going to delete again afterwards. So let's just call this 2020 and then I'll delete it afterwards. 0604 test channel. Absolutely going to delete that afterwards. This is where you can say whether it was automatically showing everyone's um, view, if that makes sense, so that it's not collapsed. So please remember to switch that on by default when you create a channel that everyone's supposed to use. You can collapse or show a channel again, of course. So if it's not something you work with all the time, you can hide it or pin it to the top or something. So there we go. I've created a channel now and um, I'm going to first very quickly go through the basic uh, ways of being able to uh, to have conversations. So the first one is what I would call just plain text. Nothing is going to go crazy. So hi all, um, have a oh, great week or something. OK, so have a great week. And whoever's in the team with me in this team um, will not get a pop up. OK, so no one's going to get a pop up um, in this team. Now something I need to do quickly. Let's uh, I just want to think if I actually added Brahm to this team. So that's firstly is being able to send a normal text, text message. I can also make a message um, like more important. So I'm going to just write important just for knowing what it is that I'm busy doing. The shortcut for that's control shift I. So CTRL shift I for important is the thing that makes it uh, like that. So control shift I, you'll see is flagging it there. But just to show you, I'll show you in a moment as well, is if I go to the little um, A with a pen, 
you'll see that there's a little important button there as well, and that's what flags it. So when you flag something as important, it gives a little flag here, yeah, it stands out a little bit more. And it also, if you're not in that channel, it will flag the channel here bold as well, which kind of helps to uh, bring people's attention to it. Now you can also uh, post announcements. Now, um, if I had to go back to the A with a pen, you'll see that there's conversation, but I can also say that I want this to be an announcement. And um, let's go grab a background image. So let me just uh, quickly get that open. So let's get a background image. Um, yeah, let's just get that for a moment. So I'm going to just, uh, you can grab an image off your PC there. So normally I use a nice abstract image. I definitely don't think this through before I click that button because I have no idea what's going to open up on the live event. So remember, live events takes a little bit more planning and I kind of forgot about that. So you can give a nice banner in the background. You can change the color. So let's for now just use a nice uh, bold color and I can say report deadline, but I do prefer using images because I'm a little bit of a creative girl like that. So deadline is um, 5 June and if you don't comply then no lunch. Now um, if you then send this you'll see that it actually kind of stands out a bit more. Now please remember like with everything in life if everything's special then nothing special. If every single post that comes through is now announcement then it's going to mean nothing to people okay so you don't want that to happen. You don't want every single announcement now to suddenly look like that and then people can't find the things that they're looking for, right? So that um, is a normal text message. That is marking a message as important. So control shift I also does that. That is marking um, it as an announcement and there's some settings on that as well. You'll remember that I could set it that people can reply to the announcement or not. If I can give you advice on a team, because within a very short while, that team's going to be very busy and there's going to be a lot of content, okay? So if I can give you advice on a team, then I would say for formal announcements, consider creating a separate channel for that. So if you're quite a big group of people that belongs to this team for a department, let's say HR or something, and you've got, I don't know, 40 or 50 people in that team, then uh, I would consider having a separate channel for formal announcements if you're scared that people can't find the things again when they look for it afterwards. So that's just something to consider. But what you can also do, people, because I really like hashtags, by the way, the hashtags works quite well um, for search. So if you had to always use a specific hashtag, so let's uh, test the theory. I don't know how fast I'll be able to search it, but um, let's just say that this is a formal announcement. Again, I'm not going to grab an image now because like I said, I have no idea what my PC is going to open up and man, I just don't feel like that stress today. So we're going to say that this is a oh, I don't know, formal announcement and I'm going to say um, new deadline and blah, blah, blah. Ugh, I can't even spell blah today. I'm definitely too quiet. But let's see if I use a hashtag and um, I don't know. Let's just not get too creative about this. So I'm going to just say formal announcement, okay? Formal announcement, and I'll spell that right. And then I'm going to also flag this as important. Okay, new deadline, blah, 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 formal announcement. Now I have to admit, if anyone wants to share about that, I don't know if you've tested it yet, Phil. I haven't tested the tagging things in Teams yet. I actually, I don't know, I haven't tested that yet. But the search command that you have at the top makes you um, also be able to, the search just works incredible across teams, okay? But for me, it's even easier if I use a specific hashtag for specific things I want to find across teams. So let's test if I can already formal announcement search that. I don't know how fast search works, so I might be, <laughs> look at that wedding at life, people. But that means I can search across teams if I want to pick up these type of things that I've used. I use this as well, for example, um, hashtag geek, was it geek? Um, so when we share um, specific uh, uh, blogs or resources and things, and the nice thing is you can find it across all your teams. So that's just something you as a group of people have to agree on, that they, you want it to be, be able to make something more searchable. You want to uh, use a specific hashtag, for example. Now let's test the theory and say, hi, I just, I'm not sure if I've added Brahm and I bet you I haven't, I didn't. Okay, so you can't add mention someone if they're not added um, as a member. So let's quickly chat about that. So if I want to add members and I just want to, um, there's Brahm, 
internship is a mentorship. Actually, we've just not updated um, the ID. <laughs> anyway, um, so there's Bram. I've added him now as a um, little member to my team. So hi, I'm Bram. Um, remember to do so and so. If I had mentioned a person in a team conversation, it's going to pop up in that person's machine. OK, so it's going to pop up in Brahms machine now, but this doesn't make an invisible bubble people. Everyone can still see this because you're in teams, not in direct chat. If I wanted a private message to Brahm, I would go to direct chat. Works exactly the same. So hi, at Brahm, please remember to do so. I can also add mention the hind old team and the team's name is TGS training. Hi, TGS, oops, at would help, TGS. And this would then, um, important, so and so, this would pop up to everyone who's in this team um, on their screens and say, hey, um, there's been an important message. And you'll see it actually does little tags here on the side as well to say. And this is also how people can pick up at mentions, of course. Um, when tagging is also in large teams, so easy to work with, brilliant. So um, I can add mention a person, I can add mention the whole team. Um, I definitely want to use hashtags, but like I said, I haven't tested that whole new thing about tagging, so that's worth to go and look at. Um, I can make announcements and I can do normal text messages as well. So that's normal uh, messaging that uh, I'm getting involved in in my team. Now the chat messages works uh, similar, but in chat the only difference is and I still think it's the same, is that you can't reply to a specific message. So this formal announcement, if I wanted to reply and say also I remember this, then that actually collapses that uh, content together. So be very, very careful to either reply on a message versus starting a new conversation. A lot of people just start typing at the bottom. I see that so often. That's like re not replying on an email and actually sending a whole new um, bunch of emails. So that's definitely not um, something that you'd want to do. Now, um, let's quickly take a look at uh, that's the conversations. I just want to check my OneNote as well, Teams channels. Um, so in your chat as well, and as I said, I've got to run through these things quite fast. In chat as well, you can do group chat, which means you can have a chat with two or three people when um, you don't have uh, a need for the team or all the resources for them. OK, because a lot of big things happens in the background when a team is created. The shared OneNote, shared planner, all of those shared resources. So uh, go and check out the group chat as well. I'm pretty sure I might have done a blog about it. I'm not sure, but there is resources out there about the group chat. So definitely have a look at that. Then also um, the meeting. So let's just have a bit of a chat. And like I said, I'm just running through some of the features at the moment. But if I look at the meetings, I can schedule a meeting in Outlook and say that it's a Teams meeting. OK, and what it does, that meeting out of Outlook, is that it uses the Teams functionality to launch the meeting. So for the call and the, the audio and the video, OK, it's not linked to a specific team. You're just using the Teams functionality. So in Outlook, I can go new um, Outlook, like a calendar invite. And yes, it's a Teams meeting. I can even do that off my phone. It's a Teams meeting. So you can actually then click on the link and join the call. In the team as well, here in the calendar, I can also go and set up a calendar invite um, for a Teams meeting, and I can even link it to a specific Teams channel, which is pretty cool. So if I then go, it'll also show in the channel. I'll come back to that in a bit if we have enough time to just go through that side of the meetings again, and I'm sure there's going to be lots of questions on meetings, so I want to just leave some time for a Q&A on the meeting side. So I can book meetings from Outlook side. I can book it from the team side here, from the calendar. I can also stand in a specific channel like I'm doing here, and you'll see that there is a little Meet Now button. I'm not going to click it now. It's going to be funky with me because I'm busy using Teams for a live event, so it's going to be a bit strange. But if I click on the Meet Now, it's pretty similar to um, setting up a meeting that's straight there um, in the channel. And what we mean by channel is, is that that meeting is related to the content that's uh, for that channel. So if this channel's name is um, Reporting and Budgets, then this meeting will be related to Reporting and Budgets. So in the meeting um, as well, and like I said, I can't quite demo that side. We're going to share some resources with you. You have the ability to uh, share your screen. You have the ability to put your video on or not. You have the ability to be muted or not. There's chat functionality as well. So the most amazing thing that I can tell you is just take your time, scroll through the buttons and things. You can now blur your background. You can bring in custom backgrounds as well. Again, we'll throw some of those resources in the um, chat. I'm not checking the Q&A at the moment. So I did a nice blog recently as well where I showed um, just step by step how to actually change and bring in a custom background, which I think is pretty cool. 
And um, yeah, so meetings, we are going to get back to that. So files and co-authoring, I'm going to get to that in a moment as well. I just want to, uh, let's quickly do this. Let's quickly open up Excel. And um, I just want to upload. So this is an important document. And um, of course, I'm going to save this to my desktop. Of course, it's going to happen. Oh, that didn't help. So desktop. There we go. Important report. OK, so there's my important report. Um, and that means that when I'm in a channel, if I now go and I want to attach a file, so if I go and say attach from my computer, oopsie, if I go and say attach from my computer and I can then upload and I'm going to go straight to, there we go, important report. So this is me attaching a document to Teams, which is actually from my OneDrive, for example. So I wouldn't have put it on my desktop, of course, but this is how I can actually share a document in a channel, but I don't have to share it with a conversation, if that makes sense. I can also go straight to the files tab here and actually upload the document here. Every one of these channels, and again, I'm not covering the whole information architecture of Teams tonight because we just don't have enough time for that. But in these channels, each of these channels is a folder inside of the SharePoint um, site behind it, which I'll show in a moment. So this means I can also upload documents straight here. In the Teams um, client, you can actually drag, um, I think it's 10 documents at a time, and on the SharePoint side, you can drag 99 documents at a time um, to it. You can, as I said, I can open up SharePoint um, be uh, behind it. I just want to show you what that looks like. But now what happens is once you've shared a document, people can click on it. You're all co-owners or members of it, which means we can all make changes to it. We can even work on it together, which is similar to co-authoring. Again, don't have the time to demo all of that tonight, but go and check out the co-authoring. I've definitely done lots of videos, um, I'm sure of it, on that as well. So the co-authoring works really, really well. If you work with documents that um, is for co-authoring, something I would suggest is maybe, and we'll get to the tabs in a moment, maybe you should consider adding that document as a tab. So if I go and add a tab for Excel, I can actually pick a document that's in loaded in this channel, which is quite nice. I mean, I can pick it from another channel as well. But if this is a document that gets worked on quite a lot, I would consider adding it as a tab, which means that people can then live co-author here and work together with you because this is actually you working in the document. And if there was other people now, and if Brom wasn't sleeping already, then um, he might have worked with me on this as well. So that, um, that is being able to open a document up as a tab in, um, in a channel so that people can co-author together. So this is my document and this is where I can see the documents that's been added in a specific channel. So think of that as a folder. This is also where I can actually just attach a document and say, hey guys, here's that document that I want you to work on or something. But now don't be that person. You don't have to write a message for each and every document that you upload. It's just not necessary. If there's a place where the document should go, so if you have a channel for budgets and reporting and you have a channel for administration, then go to that channel and go to that area and upload the document. So for example, if I go to files here, and again, I did cover this in my previous webinar and Phil did share that link. If I go to this, I've got a rule, I've got this magic rule of seven and three, okay? Seven teams, three deep when it comes to folders, okay? So I can have subfolders here, so I can have a folder and I'm gonna just take a wild guess at this and say that I've gotta divide my content up into drafts and publish and whatever. Maybe it's a publishing kind of a channel or something. So I can have subfolders, I just want to warn you, do not go deeper than three. I just won't. It's such a bad habit to start doing that again. The flatter your structures are, the faster you search, the faster you can find things. So definitely don't worry about that. I'm going to scan through some of the questions in a bit, but I see that Phil and Dina them are all posting cool things, so that's pretty cool. I'm going to absolutely leave that up to them. If I look at the SharePoint site that's just opened up behind the team, so how did I get that? I went to the files and in files I said open in SharePoint. It then opens up the SharePoint site so behind this. So if I click on home, you're going to actually see that there's a full blown SharePoint site behind your team. Now that SharePoint site has a documents library in it and that documents library, if I go to it, has a folder in it for each of the channels that's been created. OK, don't mess with the folders here in SharePoint, just don't. 
always create your channels from the team and create your subfolders from the team. For me, that's just best practice, okay? So there is the channels that I've created. And for example, there's my test channel. There's my important report. So here's another thing that you must probably didn't know. Your OneDrive keeps 100 electronic versions of your documents. Your Teams keeps 500 electronic versions of your documents and Teams are SharePoint, as you can see. You can change that library limit to have 50,000 electronic versions of a document. Okay, so then if I look at this and I click on this drop down, you'll see that there's version history, which means I can at any time go and look at previous versions of a document. Now it should have more than one version already because I, there we go. So see, there's the one I loaded and there's the one that I started typing within the team. So maybe I made a mistake and I can actually restore a previous version of a team. Or maybe Brom worked with me and he's made a mistake and he's deleted one of the worksheets out of my book. I can then go and restore a previous version of it. So that's your version history that you can see on the SharePoint sign. Another thing that I would uh, suggest that you do, there's alerts. I always set up alerts on my teams, but make sure that you're in the main folder. So in the main folder of documents, if you go and set up an alert for yourself, and even if you just set up an alert to say that notify me if items get deleted, and I want you to notify me once a week as a summary, because you don't need an immediate notification. If you set up an alert and it notifies you once a week, and do it on a Friday, by the way, because then you have whole, the whole weekend to calm down if someone's deleted your files. So on a Friday afternoon, you'll get a little summary to say, these are the files that got deleted this week, and you can scan through it and say, gee, was that wasn't a good idea or something. Because the recycled bin, which you can see there on SharePoint, keeps files for 93 days. So if it sends you every seven day a summary, no issue at all. Again, I wrote a blog. Um, there's a blog that I did about 10 things you should know about Teams. I'll definitely post that in now, or maybe Dina, if you can post that so long. So. Um, if you just go to my blog, search me for 10 things um, you should know about Teams. I did another one about um, the Teams checklist, which gives you all these Teams checklists. I'm going to post all of those uh, URLs now. Then I did another one as well, um, Teams Administration, which is a very good blog to, uh, to use as well. And then uh, also did a blog about who gets a Microsoft team because I don't think it should always be teams. OK, sometimes it should be a group chat and you know what? Sometimes it should just be a OneDrive folder. So we're definitely going to make sure that we share some of those resources there. Um, if we don't do it now, then I'll definitely get around to it and also try and do some of them. Maybe while Dina's chatting, I'll go and share some of those resources. As I said, I simply cannot share um, everything today. So that's where your recycled bin is. That's 93 days that it keeps it. That's where you can find the versions on documents. It's got by default 500 electronic versions, but you can change it to 50,000. Then, um, like I said, files, co-authoring versions, uh, recycle bin. I'm just running through my checklist of things I want to share with you. Then the tabs, let's go back to the team. So the tabs that you see there at the top, um, again, I did cover some of those last time. There's quite a lot of different cool tabs that you can add and I would definitely suggest, and the tip I gave in the beginning of my webinar of like, here's some cool things you can do, that's definitely something I would add. So you can add websites to other cool things. I can add YouTube. I can go and add um, like Vejo, is that new? Did I not see that before? What is this? I swear, did I not see that before? So Stream, um, Yammer, which is your communities. Um, I can add documents as well. I can add a Microsoft so a form as a survey or the results. I can add other SharePoint sites, Power BI, my planner, etc. So if we go to resources, let me quickly show that to you. I just want to, I'm like really rushing through this. I know it's a lot of content peeps, but I promise you these things. Just gets easier the more you work with it. So, um, so this is one of them that I really, really, and I'm gonna, while we actually on this, I'm gonna quickly just copy that. I promised that I would. Um, so I'm gonna just copy that URL. Um, I don't know if it has been copied yet or not. So there's the URL to this demo. So check how cool this demo is. It's a website that I added, and this is for new users. They can go next. What does this do? What does this do? So see, you don't even have to remember what I just told you because here I go. I'm going to like, nah, you don't have to listen to this. There's everything you needed to know. So there's a little thing that just takes you through everything and say this does this, this does this. I think it's pretty amazing. And then this is even better. So let me quickly copy this as well. Settings, um, copy. Let me just hoi this in. Uh, hoi again is the Afrikaans word, by the way, for throw it in there. Such a cool word. So this is the team's adoption guide. I've put the URL in there for you. Ah, it's not 
Oh, there it is. It is. I don't know if it picked up the system sounds now. Um, if my mic's picked it up, but how cool is that? Let's try it again. <laughs> I think that's pretty amazing. So that's also a very, very cool interactive guide which comes from the um, Microsoft adoption resources and people can actually go through this. So a lot of cool resources in there that people can use. And then um, let's quickly see other tabs, integration with Office 365, private channels. Again, I did deal with this in that previous thing, so I just want to scroll through the Q&A quickly because I know that Phil did share it. So the setting up and configuring your Microsoft Teams that Phil shared right in the beginning on the Q&A, that's the one where I covered a lot of these serious things. So I do suggest that you watch both of these if you're very new to Teams because I'm not covering all of that content, but I did speak about private channels then, okay? So if I had to create a private, and I don't want to do it because I've got enough site collections in my um, tenant already. So let me quickly find a team where I have created a, a private channel. So just uh, hold on a moment. There we go. So then in brand and marketing, you'll see that this brand and marketing has got a little lock next to it, which means I created a private channel. People use private channels because they're saying that, OK, this brand and marketing team, there's 10 of us who belongs to it. And now I'm saying that I want a separate channel where only three of us has access to it. By all means, that's maybe a good thing to do. OK, what I do want to warn you is that that specific channel creates a whole SharePoint site collection just for that folder with that content in it. I don't mind if you do that, but to have two or three or a couple of private channels in every single team, I'm starting to think like maybe you should reconsider the way your teams are structured. A lot of times I see companies where they belong to 10 different teams and in each of those teams there's a private channel and all of those different private channels are the same audience. So that could actually have just been one single separate channel or team actually. Not going to go into more detail on the private um, channels peeps. I did share that in the previous one. I'll check what uh, Dina also shared some. Um, I think she, what, what did you say? Like no prime meetings? What, 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 what? Visual is new. I was like saying, I'm sure that was, cannot schedule a meeting in a private channel. Thanks, Sue. So apparently, let's quickly check, uh, let's test her theory. Um, so I've got a meet now, but are you saying that when you um, create a meeting from the calendar, you can't, of course you can't because it won't see that team. Got it. So if you schedule it from the calendar, yeah, you can't uh, link it to a private um, team channel, but I can actually stand in the private channel and say meet now, if that makes sense. OK, then um, I'm busy hosting this in a live event with you. OK, I did do a blog about live events as well. So if you're interested in hosting live events, um, I did share. Uh, I think it was on YouTube. I can't remember, but uh, I did do live events, um, so you can definitely read up more. But live events and we'll share some of the limitations now. I'm actually going to force my sister to go and share some news with you and then I'll uh, share some resources. So there is some limitations between live events and meetings and also with how many people in a team, etc. And then uh, Dina as well as, and I'm definitely going to grab Phil in as well. Phil. I started thinking about something where I want to do a webinar with you, so we'll chat about that at some other point. But um, Dina's going to also share some ideas around um, what guest access does. So if I then look at this piece, and as I said, so a lot of content, okay? I'm, I mean, we're already 40 minutes in. I can't spend a lot more time on this. We're going to look at questions and things, and then in the q and I'm going to share a lot of resources with you that can help you fill the rest of the gaps. It's a, it would be a little bit outdated, a um, little bit, but if you search for Teams part, there's a six part um, YouTube series that I did about uh, getting started with teams. Very, very quick run through five minute videos each. Yeah, they are. So part six, part five, part four. It would be a little bit outdated with the features at the moment because this was launched when, when did I publish this? 2018. So there's a couple of features that's been launched, but this is straight from building the team, um, understanding what the UI is, etc., configuring the channels and tabs. It then deals with conversations, documents, and then the rest of the productivity apps, which is your OneNote and your planner, which again, I can't cover all of that at the moment. So I'm going to just copy this URL as well. You are welcome to go and uh, link those videos anywhere that you want to. If you want to go and download them, I actually don't care. But um, but of course, as I showed you, you can actually link them on your team. So you can actually um, link uh, YouTube videos on your team or show them. So there's a lot of cool um, resources as well. It takes you from start to end. Um, there might be a couple of small features that I didn't cover in there, but uh, but it's quite comprehensive. 
Then um, up next, um, I'm going to go back. There we go to uh, to the demo, and I'm going to hand over just to uh, Dina for a couple of minutes. And while she's busy, I'm going to carry on with the Q and A and see what else there is that I can help with or cover. And um, that's over to you, Dina. So just shout out to me if uh, if you want me to uh, go to the next slides. Thank you, Tracy. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. So my name is Dina. I'm the older sister, so I don't speak at the same pace that Tracy does, but I'm going to try my utmost. Uh, she never has. She's always been slower. It's not an age thing. So yes, a lot of content. We will be sharing the links to this. So let's first of all talk about the free and the paid versions for Microsoft Teams. So currently during the pandemic, Microsoft is saying that they will give us free six months free trial of the paid Teams. So we'll share this link with you as well, but you'll see that there's quite a lot of differences, especially from a storage perspective, from a maximum number of members perspective, as well as what you can actually do within Microsoft Teams in the between the free version as well as the team, Microsoft Teams paid version. So we'll share this link with you. You're more than welcome to post any questions. Tracy, can you go to the next one for us, please? Absolutely. It's my turn to shunt her around. <laughs> and this is where we get the most questions. Is guest access and external access? So also we'll share the link to this uh, from the Microsoft um, website. But the external access is with regards to federation. This is something that gets switched on within your Office 365 Admin Center, whether we do allow, first of all, external access so from other companies. And for instance, if within your company, you've got quite a lot of um, separate companies that all roll up to a single company and the federation hasn't been finalized, then for instance, even though you're one company, all of the companies in the one company would not be federated. So therefore you would need to open up external access within your company as well as for other companies. Then secondly, we've got guest access, and I think this is one of the most ideal features in Microsoft Teams because this allows us to actually utilize Teams for what it's what it's really great at. And that is working in teams with people that are either in our company or not in our company. So this is not just the ability to chat with people, but this is actually guest access allows us to add people into our teams so that we can co-work on documentation, meetings, chats, etc. So from a project team perspective, for instance, some of the users might be within my company and some of the users might be in the vendor's company. For that, guest access is ideal, keeps everything together. And even though we're not canning Outlook, this will absolutely give us the opportunity to keep all of our content together. You'll also see in the link that we'll share with you the major differences. So external external access users cannot share files, whereas guest access can share. External cannot access resources, teams resources, where guest, uh, guest access can share team resources. Within a company, of course, you can switch on both your external access as well as your guest access. So it doesn't mean that you've only got one option that you can use. Tracy showed us just now where your content sits in the back in, in SharePoint. So a lot of the collaboration, the co-authoring, the working on documentation together, those files actually sit in SharePoint. And how those files are managed from a security perspective, versioning, restoring, the amount of versions, etc. All of that is managed within SharePoint. So that means that there's not really a risk when it comes to open up your, your Teams tenant for external access as well as for guest access. You see there's quite a lot of them where we've got differences. Allow meet nows, external access no, guest access yes. So please go through the link that we'll share with you. As I said, a lot of content. Yeah. Tracy, if you can please go to the next one for us. OK, so before I do that, I have to hog your screen quickly because I have to bring my screen across. Sorry, everyone. I just wanted to bring my Chrome across. So um, sweet. Next screen, up to you. 
So just checking the questions, Tracy, because you're supposed to manage the questions now. I am managing the questions. OK, so as I said, um, most of this gets managed or, or the external access and the gets access both gets managed within your admin center. So within your admin center, you would either first of all, for the external access need to turn uh, on the the feature to allow external access and then as well within your um, admin center, you would need to turn on the ability to allow people to have guest access within your specific teams. The guest access, you can also specify some of the features. So if you decide to switch off some of the features for guest access, that can be done within your admin center as well. Next one, please. Okay. So now we're getting to the real sticky stuff. If we look at limitations, specifications, I don't know why we use the words limitations, but in any event, from a Microsoft Teams perspective. This is just the high level in general. And I have to tell you, this is continuously changing as well. So if we look at the amount of users within a team, and we look at the amount of teams that you can be a user of, and the amount of teams where you can be an owner of. So there's so many features in the background that also gets managed in the admin center for Microsoft Teams. And this is continuously changing as well. So at the moment for live events, it allows 10,000 people in a live event, but up until the 1st of July, it allows 20,000. So this is a continuous, Tracy was talking about this just now, the agile technology. It's a continuously changing environment. At the moment in normal meetings, for instance, this is the private channel. In normal meetings, it allows 250 people, but I saw a post yesterday that said they were working on allowing up to 350 people. At the moment, for instance, in a Microsoft Teams meeting, it does three by three. Currently, Microsoft is working on seven by seven, which would allow you 49 people on video within a Microsoft Teams um, meeting. So this is a continuously changing. So if we think of where Tracy showed us just now for the help feature, if you look at your screen on Teams, in the lower left-hand corner, you've got a help feature as well. So that's where you can go and look at what's new. So as soon as what something changes, you'll see it in what's new. So therefore, this is the latest stats and we'll share the link with you. But be aware that this is continuously changing as we've got um, the pandemic and the usage for Microsoft Teams is, is climbing tremendously. I don't know what it is at the moment, Tracy, but I mean, last time they were talking about 75 million people using this currently. So the usage is climbing tremendously. The amount of new features being rolled out as well as specific limitations and specifications that are changing based on the immense requirement for Microsoft Teams conferencing by uh, virtual meetings, et cetera, currently. If I'm not mistaken, this is my last slide, Trace. It is, it is. Thanks, Phil, for that, by the way. I'm just quickly looking at a question we had there. Um, so the question was, uh, and that was actually, um, I forgot. Publish. Oh, hold on, hold on. I don't know. Don't tell me to publish. Sorry, I'm, family, I'm on, family on webinars. Um, <laughs> so um, they asked whether, from an admin pers perspective, can you see a comprehensive list of all guest users who are members of our teams across the org? So I kind of replied and said in active users in the admin center, you can see these accounts. I don't work with that much. So I did ask Phil, and uh, Phil says guests can be seen in the M365 admin console. Okay, so that's absolutely what I thought. So in the active users, I cleaned up mine the other day, and that's how I actually figured out that one of our accounts got hacked. Um, you can actually see all those funky little accounts that gets added um, to the ADS guests, but I don't know how clearly it'll state to you whether they belong to specific teams. I don't know what the reporting is on that um, as much. Then Phil's also said they can change the upgrade to 300 per chat and it's temporary. They can reduce it to the initial announcement. Reduce it. They reduced it from the initial announcement of 350, sorry. 85 million last week. That's crazy. I'm actually looking for that, Phil. If you have details on that, I was looking for stats today on Microsoft Teams and I found quite a nice article but it was older, it was from March. Um, if you perhaps have an article, you're saying Jeff Tipper last week, if you perhaps, um, was that from um, the conference that he shared 
or was that an article? Anyway, that'll be cool to know. So stats, Azure Active Directory portal is the best place to see guests and groups. Absolutely. Thank you so much for I don't go to the Azure side. I know that it's the dark side and there's cookies, but I'm not uh, quite much of an Azure girl, so that's not really the area that I play around in. OK, so this was definitely um, some of those cool things shared. We've got a couple of minutes left. Um, I've shared a lot of resources in here as well. Phil, Dina, anyone else on the call, if you have cool resources that you'd like to share that will help people uh, get the most um, out of things, I did honestly try and share as much of this as I can. I have shared and I will just quickly look. I definitely, when I do these crazy Teams things, I normally share a lot of resources in my blogs as well. So that should also have um, a lot of resources, but I did share those specific blogs and even the Teams administration, the who gets a team, which is uh, important. There's one now that I wanted to share. Let's quickly see um, what that was. So the getting started with Microsoft Teams admin, I think is a very important little checklist. Then also the who gets a Microsoft team, um, the 10 things you should know, I think is important. But there's also a checklist that I did, um, which I think might um, help quite a bit. So checklist, let's quickly see. I don't know if it was a provisioning checklist uh, blog that I wrote, because I don't believe that everyone should create teams, by the way. So you can get mad at me and throw something at your screen right now. But if people haven't received decent training, then it's not fair of them to just create teams because they're going to end up with teams over adoption. OK, so this one's also pretty cool. Um, and this one is where I said um, that um, these are the things I would go and check, you know, um, set up an alert, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So this was the, the provisioning one. So I'll definitely share that resource as well. Let's see. So um, cool. Let me go back to my PowerPoint. So thank you so much for that stuff that you shared with us, Dina. I really appreciate that. All those uh, limits and crazy bits. We have shared um, the resources. Dina, just have a check for me and see if I missed some of the URLs that you use because I might not have shared the same sites. I did share some of them. I'd love to know that uh, 85 million. I'd love to know about that full if it wasn't a conference. I don't know, maybe it wasn't that. Uh, what was it? The M365 virtual marathon, is that maybe? Anyway, so okay. um, then, yes. I did um, put in all the links of the ones that we discussed. Can I quickly talk about the differences between scheduling meetings in Outlook and scheduling meetings in Teams, the post that I posted up there? Absolutely. Yeah. So what we found is, especially for assistance, executive assistance, personal assistance, everything, when you mm -hmm. manage people's calendars, it's very difficult to do it from a team side. So predominantly, our our business scenario is for people that manage other people's calendars, that schedule meetings on behalf of, et cetera, which means they would still be doing this from an Outlook perspective. The only problem is if you schedule them in Outlook, you can't schedule them in a channel. But if you want to schedule them in Teams, you can't schedule them on behalf of, you'll have to schedule them in your own name. So those are two of the key differences that we picked up between scheduling in Outlook and scheduling in Teams. And as we said, you can't schedule in an actual private channel at this point. Um, I think it is on the roadmap. So that's another thing that we just have to uh, take uh, note of. And then the last one was the fact that if you want to create a recurring meeting, in Outlook it will ask you how many iterations of this meeting do you want. In Teams it will ask you this beginning date and the end date, and it will say recurrence, but it doesn't ask you how many recurrences you actually want. So those are just some of the the key differences that we've picked up um, between meetings, between scheduling it in Outlook and scheduling it in Teams. Cool, thanks, Suze. So there's definitely differences here as a guest um, in the Teams as well. And please remember that this is a very short time, but keep the conversation going. Full, like I said, don't make a mistake. That oak just doesn't sleep, OK? I just see him answering everyone across the world's questions all the time. I like, I feel like useless when I see he like just is always online. But please hit us up on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on Facebook, wherever. Pl promise me, just don't send DMs, people, if I can ask that. Because believe me, it's not just you. I get 100 or 150 DMs a day asking me to just quickly help with this one thing. And it might just be one small thing, but times that by 100 a day, it keeps me busy the whole day. Please ask the questions on open platforms on social media because then other people can also respond. So go to the Microsoft Teams group on Facebook and say, hey guys, do you know how to solve this problem or how to do this? And then any of us can jump in and actually respond to it. So please remember, if you have questions after this webinar that we didn't answer, please reach out on social media.
tag me in a post. So instead of doing a direct message, please rather tweet something or do a LinkedIn post or do a um, Facebook post and then tag me in on it. I don't mind or whoever and say, hey, what do you think about this? Is this possible or not? And then I can also crowdsource it and say, hey, guys, I'm not sure, but how does this work? Because as I always say, I don't know everything, but I know everyone who does. And that's the magic power, the superpower that we have. So that's definitely um, something I think that's important. Then as always, my last couple of minutes, and you're welcome to still, like I said, up to two crazy amazing people. Let me just check this quickly. Um, so there's another question just there. Uh, I just want to see this. Also, if you schedule it in Outlook, then the RSVPs for the participants don't show up in the meeting details and teams. So that's just a comment someone else posted as well. So when you schedule a meeting from Outlook, then the um, responses of the participants don't show up in the meeting details in the teams. OK, I'm just reading that out. I'm not uh, touching on that topic at the moment. I'm going to quickly just run through um, again. Very important thing always is how to, to stay up to date and how to keep on learning. So the what's new in Office 365. So that's the Pro Plus side of things. Just go and search for it um, and you'll find uh, the site, the Microsoft 365 roadmap is incredible. You can go there and search for a specific product and then find uh, details on that as well. Then also um, the Microsoft 365 adoption tools. That's where I get that very, very sexy flipbook of Teams. Then also um, you can even go and look for the Office 365 Training Center. There's amazing resources there that can definitely be used by everyone. Then the SharePoint lookbook, holy moly people. I don't know if you've seen how sexy SharePoint's uh, become. I should actually have a nice little like how sexy SharePoint is uh, webinar. Maybe we should do that up next. I haven't thought of a topic for next week, so maybe it should be SharePoint. I don't know. I'm actually going to look at my survey because I have asked people to fill it in. I haven't looked at the results. Then a Microsoft 365 Learning Pathways. Um, so that's a template that you can install from um, the lookbook and, and that helps with training and brings it into your company. There's the flipbook that I showed you inside of my teams. Pretty cool. I did share that URL. There's the demo site that I showed you as well um, that you can add inside the teams, which is really, really cool. Microsoft Tech Community, incredible, incredible um, environment to form part of and um, to be part of the community. They do awesome blogs every month where they share um, the roadmap for the month. So SharePoint Teams, OneDrive, all of those guys go look at their cool blogs and the cool content. And very importantly as well for me is to remember that um, a lot of the learning and support and features and things you can already access in the apps. So in Office, I can already go to help and get training and show what's new. I can see the roadmaps and things, for example, in Power Automate um, or in Teams, etc. So look inside of the apps as well. There's a lot of help um, and resources in there. So that's me just running through those very, very important resources. And remember, I will share the slides again, but uh, the demo section is going to be gone. I will put a couple of slides in, I think, with screenshots just to help you with that. So I will be sharing the slides and um, the recording must probably be tomorrow afternoon. I think I'll do it when I pour myself a glass of red wine. Maybe. I don't know. I think I deserve a glass of red wine. But anyway, so um, I want to quickly just see if there was any new um, things that came through. So uh, tracking doesn't show in Teams, but in the meeting, if you go to participants, it'll show the tracking of who accepted, who declined. Attendee list downloads, also a new feature. Thank you very much for that, um, Dina. That's pretty cool. And then Phil said in social media post with a hashtag, for example, hashtag Microsoft Teams. Yes, yes, yes. So that's very, very important is that um, on social media, especially on Twitter and on Facebook as well, we use the hashtags for the products. So don't just come up with your own hashtags. So don't go hashtag Teams. First go and search and see which the ones are that are being used. So normally when I'm a bit confused about the hashtag, I'll go look for the product group first. So I'll go look for the at Microsoft Teams account or whatever that might be. And then um, I'll actually see what hashtags they use and then I'll just start using those hashtags. So please use the hashtags on social media as well because we do monitor those. So I think that kind of wraps up, up for today. As the Americans would say, we are on the hour. <laughs> it's always funny for me. Um, South Africa, we don't. We just got, okay, that's it. We, we're done. It's just over now. I hope that you had a good webinar. Thanks for joining us. Phil, as always, you are such a rock star, dude. You really have my back. And I mean, it just, man, community means everything. It gives me tears in my eyes. Um, thanks for everyone who joins. Thanks for the feedback and the comments that I always get. Um, I do hope that you enjoy these. I will share the recordings and uh, the stuff tomorrow and uh, I'll catch you up next week. I must first go and look what's happening on the survey, but um, 
Maybe I'll do SharePoint next week. I'll first go and see if people ask for anything else. If there's anything else, please uh, go post it on social media. Go follow the groups. Um, there's such a big community out there that's always prepared to help. And uh, I think you must just stay awesome. Have an amazing week. And um, for those of you that wants to join again next week, we'll catch up next week. Thank you so much. And thank you, Phil, for being a rock star. Everyone, Phil for president. I'm just saying. Thanks, Phil. And thanks, Dina.